Well, we got some fun today. You know, I get to talk about all this business stuff and recession and some of these realities. And as you know, every week we bring you three different events of the week brought to you by Visit Anaheim. Well, our friends from Visit Anaheim, Jay Burris is here with us. Welcome. Glad to have all these great events. Now, now I don't even have to think anymore, Jay. I can just look at the list that you, we'll you and you, Breeze. We'll give you everything you need. Everything I need to know. Go and have, I, can, I can be romantic and, and actually, my wife actually thinks I knew, made a plan or something. Mm -hmm. All I did was read the notes that you guys send over. Bree sends me every week. So that's good news. I, my grandkids can have family time. And we've got a big event. You know, you guys send it all. Got it made. So what's going on with Visit that Time? What's new in the world of, of conventions and all that good stuff? We've had some great things going on. Had a great summer. Uh, great, great summer with visitation. Uh, ho hotels did very well. Conventions are coming back. You know, today's the pre-con for D23, the big Disney event at the convention center. So it is an exciting time to see it coming back the way it's coming. Uh, some of it looks a little different, but uh, some of it are a little less attendance, but sometimes they are uh, bringing in more conventions to make up for that. But it's been a great summer as we lead into back to school now. There's a small dip, but uh, the future looks very promising. Nice. And, and you know something? If you would have come in here a month ago and mentioned pre-con and D23, I wouldn't have had any clue what it was. But we talked about it last week and told everybody that they need to be going to See that the big Disney event. It's a great, uh, it's a great event for us. And we have it every few years. And it's if you're a fan of Disney, it's everything Disney you know, all in one spot at the convention center. What's this? If you're a fan of Disney, so you have to, everyone's a fan of Disney. I and mean, we grew up with Disney. I, I, I still hear the Lion King in my head. My son, my oldest son, that was. I mean, he just loved that song over and over and over again. And now my son works there, so Disney's part of the part of our culture. Absolutely. I even have my uh, Mickey Mouse socks on today and to pay tribute. I'm glad that he's just doing Mickey Mouse socks. Uh, we, we don't want to go there too far there, Jay. <laughs> but that's good stuff. So D23 is coming up. Is that one of your bigger conventions? It is one of the larger one that, that repeats. Uh, there, there are larger shows, but this is the fan conventions like a D23, like a VidCon, like uh, some of the BlizzCon or the other uh, fan type conventions are really their attendance has been stronger than some of the other type associations and corporations because they're true fans and they want to get out there and be a part of it. Some of the others may be limited by travel restrictions or by uh, corporate decisions and travel policies, but the fan conventions, which we do a lot of here in Anaheim, are going very, very strong. That's that's fun to hear because that means that the individuals, as far as you know, a company tells you where to go. But an individual decides where they want to go, right? So that, that's telling us that the individuals want to get back out and go do things. And the wonder cons of the world that we have in town and everyone comes in, uh, you know, their uh, attire for the event. And it's just fun to watch and see people so excited and, and into their, their fandom of that item. So uh, we love having those. It that definitely adds some additional color to the resort district when you're in Anaheim. Well, you know something, when I've been uh, over there to taking my son to or from work, I'll watch it, and I think it's probably something that Anthony's more involved with or as much involved with, is we've watched uh, them having some of the cheer competitions over there and watching them, uh, the young ladies just walking from whatever the hotel is going, I guess they, whether they're finishing their, their events or going to another event or walking to the park. It's, it's great watching that all over the, the youth and the excitement. And that's what kind of what started us down this path of sports and going after the sports and visit Anaheim, go, creating what was called Sports Anaheim. And cheer was an event we did well, but also the volleyball we did well. And we started wanting to see what else is out there. And that's where, where this all started, going after the sports market. So explain a little bit what, what you're doing with sports. Well, we saw that the demand was there. We've got the perfect destination for the amateur sports market. So that's your volleyball tournaments. That's your cheer that is your basketball tournaments, that is your soccer, that's your surf event, all of those, they're more on the amateur um, status. So we uh, formed a coalition of different destinations within the county, as well as different venues within the county. And we all go after, with one effort, these sporting events that make an imp economic impact on the, on the county, as well as uh, cultural and community impact. Uh, because of what sports brings together. And when the, when the athletes come, usually their families come with them. So it's even more of an economic impact for the hotels, for the restaurants, for the shops. 
throughout the destination. So it's a win-win for everybody. I can't say much about the women's sports just because I couldn't figure out how to make girls. I mean, three boys are helped, I should say. So I understand that we, we traveled a lot with football and, and you know, the whole group went. And it was just a great time and a, the camaraderie that, you, that, that sports brings. And so many people just forget about all the other garbage that's going on in the world when you're dealing, you know, with, with the kids' sports. And then you get to the professionals. I mean, obviously, I'm, a, I'm an Angels fan. Been so is my whole life. I grew up right near Disneyland. Been tough. We had one good year. <laughs> but as an Angel fan, you know, you still uh, we still get heckled by our friends over at Dodger Stadium. But, you know, the Angels and the Rams and, and you know, Ducks. Got it all going on. Great history of sports here. How does that, how do you filter that down though? I mean, because I mean, I know when the Ducks moved, it came to Anaheim. All of a sudden there, or actually I guess probably was Gretzky coming to LA. But it really, I, I never heard of anybody playing ice hockey in Southern California until they came. Well, uh, they brought a lot of that. And throughout the Southern United States, they've really expanded. That's been their growth market. And that's opened up opportunities for other events because the different sheets of ice that are appearing throughout the county. We were able to bring in the, um, I guess, the Olympic curling qualification event, which was there at the Great Park. Olympic so who would have thought curling. we would have an ice event here in Orange County? But it's happening. I'm sure glad that they weren't trying to do that this week. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a bad week. It would have been tough to keep that. No matter what you do, it would probably be tough to keep the ice cold this week. But cur curling. That's an interesting one. So we've had everything from weightlifting to big surf events to, of course, the the wooden legacy uh, basketball tournament that we've had here for years. So it's a great sports history here, great uh, Olympians throughout the throughout the county, and uh, the eyes of the world will be on our region coming up in a few years, and we want to be ready for that. So w did, will college sports is that considered amateur? Is that considered professional? Where where does that fit in? It's always been considered amateur. We'll see what happens with the with the changes in the uh, being paid paid for likeness and so forth with with college sports. But uh, for the most part, that they're considered amateur uh, to come in with their events that they can bring in, whether it's the college basketball, uh, volleyball, or others. Yeah, I was wondering just because when I was uh, I used to have sports pack tickets over at the at the pond. It was at the time, right and. You know, the the tickets for the was it Elite Eight or Sweet 16 that they did over there, something like that. And, you know, I, th I think that our high school football team brought in more people unless you had one of the big local schools in it. So you just wonder where some of those fit. Well, that, that's growing as the sports market continues to expand. That grows up more sports fans, which then entail, in turn, kind of brings in more fans for those type of events. We've been a great place for those types of events, whether it's the, the uh, basketball big events at the Honda Center. We've also had things like uh, very large gymnastics events. Uh, figure skating is a growing part of our, our county and our area. Interesting. And I never knew that one. Yeah, that's a really, it's really a target market for their governing bodies because uh, there's been some success here, some successful Olympians come out of this area, and that's really a growth area for them. Wow, great information. We're going to continue our conversation with Jay Burris. And, well, I guess we can't continue with Anthony, but we're going to bring Anthony into the conversation when we come back. Continue our conversation. Jay Burris is with us. Visit Anaheim. Anthony Brenneman is with us. OC Sports Commission. Anthony, tell us a little bit. What is the OC Sports Commission? Yeah, so in, in a nutshell, uh, we like to use kind of a big example, but if you ever wondered how the Super Bowl moves around every single year, or how the Olympics picks a city, um, or it could even be something that's smaller, like a, a volleyball tournament or like a, a major cheer competition for for youth. Um, sports commissions exist in their in their local communities, in their cities, their metropolitan areas, really to be the backbone uh, to lead these these bid processes. So they go out, they try to find these events. There's usually an RFP, and okay, I'm a simple guy. What's an RFP now? Uh, Good question. Uh, a request for proposal. Okay. Um, so uh, what we do is then we put a proposal out or we counter that with a proposal uh, to uh, events rights holders, national governing bodies, uh, major sports leagues, et cetera. And uh, we want to bring these events to our community uh, ultimately to help uh, uh, bring more economic vitality, uh, social, cultural vitality to our to our communities by by hosting these different events. And the sports commission's role 
is really to be that main liaison between the public and the private sector to make that happen. So we're, are, are you the public or are you the private? We're actually a nonprofit. Um, so Okay, so you're somewhere in between those. Correct. Okay, so guys like me who thought, okay, well, the Super Bowl went to SoFi because the Rams paid a lot of money and they built this beautiful stadium that's more to it than that. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot more to it than that when you, you look on the back end of things. So um, you a lot of these uh, events rights holders or national governing bodies um, need help when they come into the community of, okay, we have all these ancillary events that are going on. We need someone to provide um, anything from like chairs, tables. Um, it could be um, uh, what they did in LA. They did a, a business connect meeting for a diversity supplier program. Um, there could be um, an award ceremony like they did with the the um, the Super Bowl. Um, there's galas. There's everything else that kind of comes with it. Um, so they need a liaison to help connect everybody. Um, kind of think of it like a, a chamber of commerce almost. Okay. Um, so you're the one or we're the ones talking uh, with uh, those private sector partners and saying like, hey, listen, uh, we want to bring this big event to town. This is going to bring you business. Um, this is, you know, opportunity to make money in a traditional time that you might not be making money. Um, and then also too, from the public sector standpoint, um, uh, the public sector loves to see it because they're, they're making tax revenues. So you could look at your sales tax revenue. You could look at your hotel bed tax revenue, which is, um, every, that every night that you stay in a hotel, you pay a tax. And then that goes back then into a, a city or a County or a convention and visitors bureau, et cetera. So all that uh, stimulation is what the, the sports commission is, is looking to benefit from um, on all different levels. So this last year, I went to a, a Hall of Fame uh, dinner fundraiser for my friend Warren Moon. Yeah. Is he the one that would do something? He would go through you guys to kind of try and, or you guys would search out him to try and have that kind of a big gala that he would put on? Uh, so am I, am I catching on a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. So uh, really what our goal is, is to bring in uh, visitors um, that are from out of town. Okay. So they're the ones that are going to come in. They're going to spend money. Uh, it's something might that not be might not be taking place here. It might be a one off event. Um, so we're looking really to bring in the, those visitors and tourists uh, to, to come in. Uh, we do, on the other hand, when you're talking about galas like this, you know, we do support our community from an educational also a professional development standpoint, and I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit later about the sports speaker series, some of the other initiatives uh, that we use uh, sports to kind of uplift our communities. So that's that's another fold of um, what we can kind of do um, for our communities. Uh, but usually when we're, we're talking about the, the events uh, industry, it's always trying to find something uh, that's not taking place here and is going to bring in those, those visitors. So... When the Super Bowl, and I go back to that one because I'm ignorant and, and just can throw out things that That's I understand a, a little bit. Super Bowl came and it was in, in uh, Inglewood, and they probably don't have a whole lot of hotel rooms in, in Inglewood. You would have people that may want to stay in, in Orange County, and then you'd set up transportation or events out here. Would, would that be something you would do? Yeah, so uh, there was actually a, a Super Bowl was a, a good example of in uh, downtown Disney, actually Disneyland Park. Um, ESPN did their NFL live, uh, there. So, uh, with them tied into, uh, uh, ESPN and, and ABC, um, uh, they did a bunch of their shows, uh, there that people could actually go that were in the park to, to watch it live and see, uh, their, fa their, their most favorite, uh, personalities. Um, so there are ancillary or you could say compression, uh, events that take place, uh, with that. There's plenty of people, too, that come in for events like that that are saying, hey, I want to make this into a vacation as well. So I'm going to go down to Huntington Beach. I'm going to go see Disneyland. Uh, you know, maybe I want to check out another uh, beach destination in Orange County. Maybe I want to go to Knott's Berry Farm. So uh, a, a lot of them and one of the great things about Southern California in general is, um, you know, this is a um, destination that people can have vacations at. It's not something that you just want to fly into for like two days and be done with it. Um, we want to incentivize them to stay, spend money, and you know reap the benefits. You know we, we're spoiled. So I chat. We, I just had this conversation over the weekend. I had no idea we would be doing this today, but I just had this conversation over the weekend with how spoiled we are in Southern California. We've generally got great weather. We've got professional sports. We've got, or, and I stay in Orange County. I, my my car sputters at the county line, so I just stay here in Orange County. 
we've got the Angels, we've got the Ducks, we've got Disneyland, we've got Knott's Berry Farm. We've, and, and we forget the fact that people spend tremendous amounts of money. They work hard all year, all maybe even for many years, to save to go on a vacation to something that we could do every day. Right? I mean, we were just talking about the fact that my, my son, I said, works, I told you, works at Disneyland. And where someone said, Well, is Disneyland really open on Thanksgiving? I said, well, Yeah, it is because people want to be there. Right? You've got all these things. You can tie an event in, but it doesn't necessarily just have to be people that, that are coming from out of town. I have a lot of friends that stay, their staycation is at the Disneyland Hotel and they only live 20 minutes from there. Right, right. Right now, there's a few more hotels you can even stay at if you get tired of just staying at the one property. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, coming from a kid that grew up in Pennsylvania Amish country, um, I, I, I don't take it for, for granted as much as <laughs> some individuals that, that live around here. Uh, so uh, to me, it's an embarrassment of riches, that's for sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good way of putting it, right? Especially coming, I mean, if you haven't studied Amish country, I mean, there's, it's, a, it's a big difference between the Amish way of life and what we, what we, what we enjoy here. Right, that's a, a big world of difference. So, so tell me a little bit, what has what the commission got coming up? I mean, I think about sports commission and automatically my mind goes to professionals. Mm -hmm. You're talking before that you're really looking more toward amateurs. Yeah, so every destination is different. So you, you have to understand what your bread and butter is. So for Orange County, we have a, a plethora of uh, youth sports facilities, whether it's down in the, the Irvine Great Park, um, multiple soccer fields, baseball, softball. Um, there's some some ice facilities over in Huntington Beach. They have a sports complex too, as well. I mean, you can even go further into South County, down into San Clemente, San Juan Capistrano. So that's something that we have as an advantage to to us. Um, there's other destinations that really only have major uh, arenas or or stadiums. LA is a good example of. They're really just looking at doing the major sporting events. They don't necessarily have some of those amateur recreational facilities. So for us, we do look at a lot of uh, youth events uh, that are coming to town. A lot of them just took place over the summertime. So we had some major softball competitions, uh, Premier Girls Fast Pitch just took place. Um, then we also... Uh, I couldn't even handle that. I mean, I watched how those girls pitch and I'm, holy cow, they're they're pitching faster than uh, young Mr. Clemens did last night when he struck out Shohei, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> We're going to talk more with Anthony and with Jay, we come back to the speaker series. Wonder what that could be. And a golden ticket. I think I might want that one myself. But hey, let's continue our conversation. We are talking this morning. Jay Burris, Anthony Brenneman are with us. Visit Anaheim and the OC Sports Commission. And being a sports junkie, and I love listening to this kind of stuff because, yeah, you know, it, it's – I was almost going crazy. It was a couple of days ago when there was no sports on. I didn't know what, what am I going to do? I mean, almost well, yesterday, early in the day, and other than the U.S. Open, right? What could you watch in sports? I thought we were going to have some football and have, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I almost had to go out to the pool and hang out out there. But let's talk about youth sports. So, so that's what you were talking about a little bit about before, Anthony, is bringing youth sports to the area. I do want to get a, a, a you, you, to give us that one uh, trivia that you told us about during the last break, the oh. ducks coming to Anaheim. Yeah, so there, uh, I'm a, I, I read a lot of books, and uh, there's a book. Today's National Reading Day, right? I yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, there's a book called Disney War uh, that came out, and uh, it, it talks about uh, Michael Eisner's son. Actually, this is the the former uh, president and CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Uh, his son actually played hockey growing up, and when he was pitched on the mighty ducks as a as a movie script um he loved it just because uh you know his son played it he understood the the sport and everything in the early 90s i want to say um and then that movie ended up becoming a, a massive massive hit and after it became a massive hit uh michael uh michael eisner then called up gary bettman uh, the, the commissioner of the nhl uh, and said hey you know what can we do to kind of buy into the the nhl and get a franchise um, and then the rest was uh, history to, you know, negotiate a deal and eventually bring the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim uh, and now what we know as the the Anaheim Ducks. Nice. Okay. So thanks to Michael Eisner, we get to, to have a, a, a fun event to go to and, and hopefully we'll get back in the winning ways. And, and the, well, I go back to the Paul Korea days. So that was a good time with Paul Korea, Temu Solani. Now, now they're gone. Getzloff's gone. So. 
got a whole new era coming up. Yeah. But let's get back. But but you know something? One of the things that we could probably take from that though is I I when I was young, I didn't even know about ice hockey. Mm-hmm. Right? It wasn't something I mean, from Pennsylvania, you probably knew ice hockey, but here in Anaheim, I mean, our idea of we didn't even think about ice hockey. That that the youth are now playing ice hockey. Yeah, so and that's the thing that I'm going to always be preaching is Orange County is its own market, it's its own identity, it's its own brand. And when a, a situation like that arose uh, back in the early 90s for the, the NHL to come in, um, it really wasn't an extension of L.A. It was its own market out here. So the Ducks have been able to kind of carve out their their own niche. Um, they've been able to develop it by uh, working with different venues and then purchasing and and buying different venues to uh, rename them the, the rinks. And they've really built this ecosystem for hockey and ice sports in general throughout the whole county. Uh, to uh, uplift and and bring um, ice sports as a uh, a major sport for for our youth uh, as they grow up. So that's what led to um, a lot of what we see today of kids playing all these different um, ice competitions. You know, you, you think about it, and I don't even hear about anything else. I mean, I, my opinion was it was Gret- the the Kings getting Gretzky is what opened up all of Western America. Mm-hmm. Hard to imagine one guy could have had that kind of an impact. But I don't hear about, you know, a lot of the ice events in L.A. County or Riverside County. You know, that happens. That seems like it's just an Orange County issue. Mm-hmm. You know, the, 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 the amateur rinks and the, where the kids are playing. And my opinion is you get the, the more we can get the kids into the, the hockey and football and Little League and soccer and gymnastics and dance and all of these different events, they're not on the street, and they're getting in, they're getting a good mold for to be good citizens growing forward. Mm-hmm. Right, it's kind of what you made say it earlier is it's you're building that, or maybe Jay said it, where you start off with them enjoying a sport, and they become tied to that throughout life. Right, yeah. it's a it's a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, to even to piggyback off of that too, I mean, you know, we want to look at um, creating a healthy lifestyle. So uh, you know, you want kids to stay fit. Um, you know, oh, you didn't have to but, go there, Anthony. I'm but, oversized but, now. You're talking about staying fit, yeah. Staying fit, uh, but. so Levin, we have to mute his mic. I, I don't know about, but no, I want to I want to hear a little bit. Tell me about this the speaker series. What's that all about? Because I love going to, to events and mm-hmm. hearing, and I'm a knowledge nerd, right? So even though I can't play sports, you know, right. I, I love to learn about them, and, and and that's what it's for, uh, honestly, too. So it's one of our other... world's best Monday morning quarterback <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of other people, right. So it's one of our it's going to be one of our key cornerstones or key pillars for the sports commission moving forward. So it really is um, something to promote, conver- to conversate, educate and celebrate Orange County is the way that we're looking at it. Glad so- I'm glad, Bri, I'm glad you didn't put that into my conversation because I couldn't even say all those things together. Conversate, educate and celebrate Orange County when it comes to sports. <sighs> OK, so in the way that we're looking at it is we Jay, now I know why you brought him. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we want to uh, have engaged our, our public in Orange County to go going back to the whole brand and identity uh, initiative to say, hey, um, what are important topics that are going on in sports um, that we can relate back to, to Orange County in certain ways? So for this first one that we have coming up, um, it's going to be a quarterly series. Uh, so it's coming up on September the 8th, so this week at Nutsbury Farm Hotel. It's going to be celebrating uh, a Title IX anniversary, which was the gender equity bill that the Nixon administration, Orange County local, uh, actually passed in 1972. And it is for the women that champion Orange County sports. So we're using it as a, an homage to um, some of the women sports executives that as it relates back here to, to Orange County, so we have Kim Badir, the GM of the, the Honda Center, um, soon to be OC Vibe. Um, we have Rebecca Schulte. Who wait, is, wait, back up. Honda Center is going to be OC Vibe or she's going to be part of OC Vibe? She, the, the, the rebranding and renaming of Honda Center will be OC Vibe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not going to be Honda Center anymore. No. So uh, OC Vibe, and not to get off track too much, is OC Vibe is basically going to be the sports and entertainment um, company that oversees the Honda Center, the Ducks, the the Goals, which are down in San Diego, the Rinks, which are their practice facility, okay, um, and the the whole entertainment complex they're they're bu- building over there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then we have Rebecca Schulte, who's with uh, 
senior vice president of Valley Sports, which is where you can watch both the, the Ducks and the Angels actually play their uh, or broadcast their their local games. Um, and then we have uh, Christy Giddings uh, from the Big West Conference. Uh, she is their deputy commissioner. Um, so it's a collegiate sports conference that's actually located down in Irvine. So that is uh, the conference that Cal State Fullerton, UC Irvine, uh, Long Beach State are all part of. So they'll be speaking on this panel. And uh, what we're using it as is a way to bring in uh, sports industry professionals uh, that exist here in Orange County and kind of give them, you know, their, an area of their own to um, find professional development, um, talking about that, that education component, um, and then also networking opportunities uh, out here. How can they grow their career that they get from this panel discussion? Um, how, how can they meet maybe somebody there at the, the panel discussion that they might not meet elsewhere? So, how do we get tickets? So uh, to get tickets, you can actually just go to our website. Um, so that's ocsportscommission.com. So uh, we actually have a link there. Uh, Hero Shot. That's plural. Sports with an S. Yep. Okay. Ocsportscommission.com. Yeah, OC okay. Yep. And uh, you can actually just uh, go right on there. There's a Hero Shot, and you know we'll redirect you. So it's about thirty-two dollars. Uh, for general admission. And then we actually have a student price too as well because we care about educating those students that want to work in the sports industry for $18. Um, so right now there's about 85 people that are registered. So good turnout. Uh, our goal was to get 50. Um, and most of them are from all different sports organizations, then uh, business leaders, politicians, et cetera, that will uh, be attending this event. Awesome. We got about a minute left. I want to hear about this golden ticket. A golden ticket. All right. So this is a, a fundraiser campaign that we've been pushing for the past six months. Um, so what we've done is we worked with our partners from uh, the Ducks, the Angels, Disneyland, and Knott's Berry Farm, each to uh, donate uh, two season tickets uh, from their respective uh, industries. And uh, we combine that all as one, and we raffle it off uh, to one lucky winner. It's about a $5,000 value. Uh, we sell the, the, the sweepstakes ticket for $100 a pop. And uh, we also limit the number that we, we sell. So you actually have pretty good odds. Uh, I think the max what we sell is about 500. Um, so if you take that into consideration, uh, plus the, the $100 that you're, you're paying going for a, um, a, a good cause, um, I think you have actually pretty good odds to, to winning the whole thing. And when's that going to be raffled? Uh, so that is going to be raffled on September the 23rd. So September 23rd. Up. So we're about, I think we're about 16 days out from that. And you can also go to our website, ocsportscommission.com. Once again, um, it will hit you right in the face as soon as you get on our landing page uh, to, to purchase a, a ticket there too as well. Um, and it's something we plan on doing on an annual basis. That's great. Sounds like That sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, you can have a good time when you got Angels, Ducks, Disney, and, and Knots. Knots. Holy cow. When are they going to listen to Ron Siegel Radio? I mean, come on now. We're going to have a problem here. Hey, you should purchase a ticket. Uh, maybe I will. <laughs> Great information. If you want more information about any of these items that we've talked about today, give me a call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsiegelradio. And if you miss it, again, ocsportscommission.com, ocsportscommission.com.